couple of loose wraps, go back to the head, and then I'll put in my dubbing loop. I mean my uh, my material, and I'll take a little shepherd's crook like that and uh, hook that right in the loop, and then I'll give her some spins. That makes my a nice uh, tapered body. Okay, now I'm going to uh, wrap that right up uh, over the uh, uh, the tail. I mean the. Uh, yeah, tail stubs. Okay, now I'll give that a couple more wraps. There. Okay, now <clears throat> for the hackle, I'll just use a, um, a, a grizzly hackle, and um, I'm going to tie it in wet because uh, all this hackle is going to do is uh, provide um, a suggestion of legs. So it's only going to get a couple wraps. And I'll fold it down. Okay. What are you doing now? Okay, I just, uh, I'm just um, uh, getting the hackle uh, fibers to lay on the bottom of the hook. So I just sort of sc stroke them down like that and, um, and push them back. And uh, when that's in, uh, in the water, they'll just sort of work a little bit. Okay, now the, for the wing, I'm going to use a piece of uh, musk ox. Now you can use deer hair or you can use elk hair and get pretty much uh, the same look. But if you notice, the, the um, caribou hair has a natural curve to it. You see that all right? Sure and and if, if you see the, um, uh, the fly that I've already tied, you can see that the fibers uh, uh, fold right back or roll right back, and this uh, gives it a better look. If you used um, a deer or elk, which I have for a lot of years, uh, and it works just fine, uh, but the hairs more or less um, stand up kind of straight. So this here I like better because it's curved back. But when you go to tie it, well, first of all, caribou can be kind of hard to find. Uh,